following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Yes, it does every day. And of course, uh, starting off the day today, we'll check in with Mr. S&P. It's up 19 points, 2.15 billion shares. So, you know, pretty much when we come to this 2100 level on the S&P cash, volume has pretty much always fallen out. Now, that does not mean that uh, we will not hang up and around here for a few days. Uh, the reason why? Fun buying. And uh, we talked about that on Friday. And, of course, they came back in droves today. If you uh, check out a website, it's a, I think they've got a trial, but the one good thing about the site is it's called Trim Tabs, is it does keep track of fund money coming in and out of the markets. And uh, it was uh, forecasting a fairly decent um, size amount of cash coming in uh, for funds. It's kind of the usual amount. But there's one thing, and that is uh, a quote that goes back forever, and that is, uh, a sucker never gets an even break. can't remember, was that Barman, Barnum and Bailey? Anyway, it was one of those folks. Anyway, we've got, uh, you know, they're going to mark the markets up, make people buy at the highs. Uh, there's a reason why they love putting those charters together that say people have to buy at the very beginning of the month. And uh, it always means that there's an easy out every month. If you want to get rid of some of your shares, just sell them at the highest price possible, probably the highs of the month. Uh, in a lot of cases, uh, at the very beginning of the month, you know, sometimes the markets pull back and then go higher. But, um, you know, you've got people that are basically trapped. They've got to buy within the last two days of the month or the first three days of the month. And uh, basically, we're in that now, so we've got till about Wednesday. We also have other things going on in this market. We've got a lot of news, so we'll try to get started quickly. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1999, shortly after its 103rd birthday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average takes a big slurp from the fountain of youth as it replaces four stodgy old companies. Chevron, Goodyear, Sears, and Union Carbide with hot gross stocks like Home Depot, Intel, Microsoft, and SBC. And, of course, uh, if you've ever wondered why the indexes go up, it is a thing called survivorship bias. If you Wikipedia that, uh, you'll get a good indication why the indexes really tend to wander away after a number of years uh, from what they are doing because, of course, the same companies are not there, uh, but we will. But uh, eh, it was interesting. But uh, eh, I don't know what else you can say uh, about it other than that. And uh, we'll get on with the snooze. As always, when news breaks, I'm here to fix it. Um, it's time to run for the bathroom if you've been eating at Chipotle in the Northeast. Uh, they've uh, shut down 43 of their stores. And, you know, probably not a big news item, but of course, if you're any time in food prep, this has been going on for a while. And unclear exactly what and how um, they can get this handled uh, correctly, but um, this is like the third or fourth time that they've done this, and it's very unclear why they are having um, much bigger problems than other folks, maybe because of the volume that they're doing, but uh, all in the northeast, but uh, man, don't worry about uh, Taco Bell. Uh, this place will give you, uh, well, things that you do not want. 
Uh, of course, it's down today. Everybody's saying you should buy it. It looks to me like this thing's probably seen the best of the worlds. I've never been big on these food companies uh, that are kind of uh, bloviators. And ever since I heard this company uh, with its mission statement of uh, food with uh, integrity, I'm thinking, eh, what kind of Whole Foods hippie uh, LSD dropping kind of stuff is this? I, mean, I guess it's okay. I guess a lot of people like it. Eh. The one thing I hate about it, it's always got, they got small parking lots. They're always crowded. I have to fight for a parking spot to get in there. Eh, too much trouble for me. Maybe they'll have one with a nice drive through As God intended, food should come out of the window as you drive past it in your convertible. That's the way I was taught as a kid. It's a way I'm going to teach my kids too. Yada, 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 yada. <laughs> And yes, they do. Yada, yada, yada. We've got uh, more talking than you can ever stand this week. And uh, one of the reasons why I'm going to stand back, and that is because we've got nothing but uh, Fed speak this week. Starting on a Wednesday, Janet Yellen at 10 a.m. Dudley at 2.30. Stanley Fisher at 6 o'clock on Thursday. We've got four of them, Patrick uh, Parker speaks at 8.30, and William Dudley talks somewhere else, actually, at the same time. For the second time in a day, Stanley Fisher talks, of course, in the second time in two days. And then Dennis Lockhart at 1.30 on Thursday. So uh, any of these people could uh, drop the proverbial uh, baby Ruth in the punch bowl out here. If you're trading in a day, you probably ought to know uh, that most of these people, just before they speak, We'll have the text of their speeches out there, and that's probably where you're looking for uh, moves in the market. In the case of Janet Yellen, uh, look for it about uh, 10 minutes before 10. She normally drops them maybe 15 minutes, 10 minutes. So on Wednesday, uh, just after we open, kind of watch for that. And, of course, the rest of them uh, pretty much dropping their texts. I think, you know, if you're speaking on Wednesday and Thursday, you Probably not going to see that much difference between the two uh, people. But um, Fisher may actually be the most aggressive out of market hours at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. So we may see some action after that night. But if you are trading, I think we're going to have a lot of people talking past each other and more yada, yada, yada. Uh, of course, uh, we've got earnings and really... Uh, before the bell tomorrow, American Superconductor, Archer's Daniels Midland Supermarket to the World, Harris Corp, HCP, Kellogg, Mobileye, Sprint, Fichet, Western Refining after the bell tomorrow night, Checkpoint Systems, Chewy's, Hecla Mining, Marriott Genetics, Terra Pharmaceuticals, Tesla Motors, X uh, United States Corp, Zendesk, and Zynga. So a lot going on and, of course, more earnings this week. If you are a fan of Boeing, like I am, Boeing or I'm not going, uh, we've got uh, China basically knocking off a combination of the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. They rolled that out last night. It's going to be a company called the Commercial Aircraft Company of China. Um, and you would think, eh, these guys have never made an airplane. They actually have made uh, airframes since I think the 1960s uh, for some of the jets that uh, uh, our uh, United States has made. Uh, but this is basically a big knockoff, and, of course, they're going to go after our business, uh, Boeings and Airbuses in the near future. Um, we've got a couple of people that are actually in uh, the aviation business in the den from time to time. And uh, it's kind of interesting to see what they have to say. But just because you build a plane doesn't mean people will buy it. The problem is then you have to have all the parts and surplus. And if you've already got Airbus and you've already got Boeing 
Do you want to add a third airline out here? Now, are they going to sell and are they going to buy all these planes for their uh, own use? The answer is yes. And, of course, as I say, um, you know, it's all about China, uh, but it's all, you know, basically about uh, about them. And if everybody thinks that we're going to be selling all these airlines, uh, airliners to China, I suspect in a very short amount of time they will only be using their own. They're, uh, of course, not building their own jet engines. Those are a combination of a French company and General Electric. Uh, but uh, other than that, they're pretty much there. And, of course, they'll just copy whatever we make. I like Chinese. I like Chinese. Oh, we like them. And I didn't get a chance to make a slide for this, but I thought it was interesting just before the break. And that is uh, breaking news was that the Chinese apparently have quietly bought 34 radio stations and are manipulating the news to get a pro-China version of the news, especially around the uh, centers of power in Washington, D.C. Didn't have enough time to dig through it all the way. But uh, kind of interesting that they're already getting involved in uh, eh, kind of the Pravda of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, maybe even the 50s. But uh, remember, there was always what Pravda had to use to say when the chai comms were big. Those were the Russian chai comms. They, China never really said anything, but uh, getting very busy very quickly in uh, the propaganda ministry and uh, what goes on. Kind of interesting that they even care. But uh, uh, I digress. Uh, we talked last month, and everybody gave me a, a lot of uh, grief. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I did. We talked about the. this is the... Uh, Dopperman is the uh, drug where everybody said, well, it went from $750 to $750. And I said, well, there were four other drugs uh, that do exactly the same thing that this drug does. So I couldn't get all wound up about it. Well, of course, we see today that uh, uh, Imprimis uh, is not only going to make the, a similar drug, which is basically for malaria. If you've already uh, got uh, AIDS, and you've got malaria too, then uh, this is one uh, malaria drug that can help. But uh, the Impromise Pharmaceuticals is basically making their drug. It was one of the four that I talked about at that time and said I didn't think it was really a big deal other than this guy was that uh, did the dapamine was a, a moron. But uh, four other drugs, uh, and, of course, uh, they are going to pick up the... Um, the uh, um, what do you call it? Yeah. Anyway, they're going to make it for a dollar a pill. And uh, so that guy, I guess, with the $750 pills out of luck, they got another one already, and it's uh, in production now at a dollar a pill. So, eh, like we can get all wound up on all these things, but most of these things blow over pretty quickly. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesci.
Casavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And we're back. Although I never left. Fallout 4 is a uh, role playing game. They call them RPGs. Uh, it comes out next week. I played it. It's. Kind of interesting, kind of wander all over. It's not like a limited game where you kind of are very limited to, you know, rooms, that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, you wander around and uh, you make alliances and build stuff and shoot people and everything else. The big news on this is just how big games have gotten, especially in the market. Uh, this company is not public. It's Bethesda who uh, actually does it. But I think we're going to start seeing a lot of these uh, game companies really start ramping next week, so I'm giving a little heads up out here. Um, I played uh, Fallout New Vegas, which is kind of interesting. Uh, these things all have themes. This one is kind of a uh, alternative history where uh, there was a big nuclear war somewhere in the 1950s. And everybody's come out of these vaults, and uh, now they're wandering the earth and trying to repopulate it and everything. But uh, just the game that they gave away for Apple's iOS and Android, kind of a uh, teaser for this game, has already had one billion plays. And you can look at some of the movies that are doing two million dollars or four or five million dollars over a weekend like they have in the last weekend. And the, a lot of people are really starting to move uh, a lot of this money in Hollywood uh, to games. Um, anyway, this one comes out next week. To give you the idea of the size of some of these games, um, they do a lot of voiceover work, and there's over 110,000 different uh, conversations that they've got recorded, depending on what you do in the game, that can pop up at anywhere. 
Um, these things are, they call them massively uh, oriented, uh, what is it, massively oriented role-playing games. Yeah, I can't remember exactly the term. But uh, huge amounts of stuff, but uh, they get to develop these games and have people test them and see whether they like them over time. And, uh, a lot less risk uh, than a bunch of movies that uh, may or may not uh, actually come out. Uh, the games don't have to have uh, one sing single theme to them. But uh, next week, um, notice this is going to come out. I think it's going to have monster sales, and that may move a lot of other companies that are in this sector, especially when they start having their games come out for Christmas, as they always do. So uh, keep an eye out for it. It is a mad, 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 mad market. You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can post a message in the den if you want something uh, for me to look at. Um, we'll look at Chipotle first as soon as my charts come up. And then we'll start looking at some other stuff. Um, as we said, uh, I suspect that why we have a nice day today, we're probably looking at playing around in some kind of uh, trading range into Wednesday and Thursday as we get the FOMC people out there bloviating and uh, babbling and other things. But uh, and we're probably pretty good. The volume, 2.3 billion shares uh, as we get to the bottom of the hour. Uh, Chipotle's down. Of course, volume's pretty good. Um, you know, you got to figure that this uh, 597.33 gets tested, and uh, that's the July 6th low. Just uh, 500,000 shares. We already got 1.5 million shares, so there's, this thing is going to start building some decent energy probably over the next few days. If we look back a little farther, that gap, just under 600 bucks, looks like it could be the support level for a while. That gap takes you back. Uh, when it formed to, what is that, uh, July 22nd of 2014, this gapped up with 2.26 million shares. So 1.5 million shares now is it's not that bad to, to go back and start filling some of those gaps. Now, it has tested uh, that gap and filled it, which was a good buy signal back on that July 6th high, but uh, came up and didn't have a lot of volume once it got past the January 8th high at 727, uh, this thing basically got up there on a big candle uh, back on, what is that, uh, July 22nd. And just never really, uh, that was 3 million shares. But once it broke that top, the uh, volume just kind of faded out, bounced around up there a bit, and uh, now back into this a bigger trading range that would take you back to that gap of, yeah, July 22nd of 2014. So uh, we'll look at that. We've got a lot of other stocks to look at. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. Post a message in the den or email me at path at tfnn.com. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. If you're looking for a great opportunity to diversify your financial portfolio and hedge against the falling stock market, consider the new Market Safe Metals Hedge CD from EverBank. This five year indexed US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to metals with gold and silver components and allows you to hedge against falling equities with a shot component on the SPY ETF. You can earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if gold and silver increase in value and the SPY ETF decreases across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on the CD. Don't let fallen markets get you down. Get the Metals Hedge CD. The November 12th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Uh, anyway, it uh, going to look at a few stocks out here, see how they are moving. Whole Foods, uh, well, I tell you what, if uh, you're a fan of South Park, uh, the uh, series this year, I think it's best that they've ever done out of 19 years of uh, doing South Park. Um, I think they've got it right on the nose, at least uh, eh, for those people that are just a little bit too uppity. Anyway, uh, Whole Foods, of course, they're making fun of Whole Foods and South Park this season. Uh, but uh, kind of interesting to see whether or not Whole Foods has finally made a low out here. It did dip below the previous August 24th low that had 14 million shares and it bounced a little today. Certainly doesn't have a lot of volume, but of course, you don't want it attacking uh, the uh, lows here with a lot of volume on August 24th. This had 14 million shares at $30.18, got to 20.73 this morning. And of course, it's up about 4.3 million shares. But my guess is this thing probably going to need a bit more consolidation before it gets off the bottom. But uh, kind of interesting to see Whole Foods, as uh, Tom O'Brien says, Whole Paychecks. Um, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm not that big of foodie, I think, to spend a lot on it. Uh, if you're into Biotexas Retrofin RTRX, uh, didn't know much about it. But uh, not a bad-looking pattern out here for some of these. And I, I guess we'll look at the IBB next uh, as it's uh, up a bit. 
as everything is. Uh, but this thing gapped up exactly as it should have back on March 18th with 5.4 million shares. Came back into it with this 670,000 shares back into October 23rd. And it's starting to move up a little bit here. You might keep an eye on this, uh, that $17 level on light volume. A lot of times you get a little bounce out of these things and then the pullback and either big volume or no volume. And then that's the time to actually uh, start taking uh, a big, harder look at this long. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Da -da 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 -da. See if we have anything else going on. Um, Visa actually is buying out Visa, Visa Europe. And uh, I don't know why uh, the market doesn't like that. Maybe just... Uh, this thing was going up on a light volume to begin with, but uh, certainly down on heavy volume today. But uh, buying a Visa Europe, July 24th, $76.92. This thing has been going above that for about four days. Never had the volume, though. Um, always about half that previous high. Got to $78.99 with a lot of million shares. It started a little bit of reversal on Friday. And, of course, today down on 22 million shares. So more volume than the July 24th high uh, for a downside. And uh, I don't know if you can make a lot more of it other than that. Let's see if I've got anything else. There's just, I mean, everything's up a little bit, but that's it. Oh, we talked about IBB. Let's take a quick look at that. I think this is finally starting to get back to a resistance level. Certainly the volume is exactly what you'd want to be looking at as it comes down into these candles that started to have fairly decent volume. We're getting back into the candle of September 21st. Uh, that day it had five, uh, oh, 5.5 million shares on the way down. It set up a gap on the next day on the 22nd gap down. Uh, we kind of got into that and kind of spiked into it on the 29th of October with 2.6 million shares. Today, just a million shares as it went and is pushing that gap. But we're getting into that candle of the 21st out here. And it'd be very interesting to watch some kind of volume out here. You know, you've got a couple of things that really are setting up the IBB for lower prices. But one, it hasn't tested the August 24th low. It did get awful close. Uh, that volume on the 24th of August was 4.8 million shares, got down there with September 28th with 11 million shares. And uh, I think you'd have to really look hard at this thing uh, as uh, that candle of the 21st of September develops uh, with uh, just 5.5 million shares down. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Do I have any mail? Check out here. I do, so we'll go get to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, uh, South Park, very interesting this year. Uh, it is not for the timid, though. It's not a uh, PG-rated season. I would say it uh, gets a whole R, but uh, I think it's probably the best season they've ever had. Uh, just, uh, what else is Norwegian Cruise Line? I guess if you're not going to CMG and going to get some uh, 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 IBS from them, I guess you could probably go on a cruise ship and get it. Uh, this thing's setting up a little doji out here today. Uh, notice that uh, July 31st high at 63.22 came in with 2 million shares. We've got about 700,000 shares today, but even uh, trying to get into it on the 28th, uh, 800,000 shares. Just not a lot of volume as this thing goes back and challenges those. Uh, the two things that really matter to these uh, companies is the dollar exchange rate and, of course, crude prices, and crude prices have done nothing but go their way. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe it's the dollar that is enough to be out there. And dollar's not moving a whole lot. If we look at the continuous contract at the dollar, it's uh, they kind of pushed it down a little bit earlier this morning, but it's just off six cents now and actually fairly close to the highs of the day. And every time this thing gets a move higher, uh, our government does a lot to try to keep uh, it from getting away from everybody and moving much higher. But uh, I think the die is cast on it. Uh, 2100 on the S&P cash now. 2.4 million, excuse me, 2.4 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. Uh, we were looking for something around 
to five billion to break the highs uh, out, and uh, so we're about halfway there. We'd have to have a ton of volume in the next 30 points higher to really get uh, the S and P to some kind of breakout level. And I don't just—it's hard for me to see any kind of thing that would. Uh, could we go over the level? I think the answer yes. Are we going to get the volume? And it's just hard for me to see these earnings ever justifying that kind of earnings. Had a question to look at IBM from the email. And, uh, you know, this thing's just kind of hovering around here. The biggest problem I see with this is, of course, uh, Mr. Buffett can come in here and buy at any time and run some shorts out of this thing. Uh, but the uh, chart on it looks pretty horrible. And, a lot of people getting into their business. And uh, I wrote about that in the Tech Insider on Friday. It looks to me like there's going to be more people getting in and going after IBM. And uh, there's uh, more than a few people that are declaring war on them, think that they've got them back on the ropes. Um, had some nice movement out here in the healthcare stocks today, and I think earlier in the day. Maybe noon, uh, that was the best sector out here. But uh, not a bad-looking chart for this one other than the fact, uh, you know, you had this thing gap up with 2.5 million shares uh, on the 5th of May, and it's been making this pattern pretty much all summer long. Went up, tested the highs, didn't quite get there, but uh, was uh, basically 35% short, 33% short on volume up at the highs on that September 17th high. It's come back down. Yesterday we had, or yesterday, Friday we had big volume with 3.1 million shares. So it's already busted that gap up volume of the 8th of May. And But we're getting a little bounce with the rest of them out here. Uh, at best, you're looking at some consolidations. At worst, uh, there could be much bigger problems in this healthcare industry. We're just getting a bounce out of it today. Uh, Corn Ferry. Uh, KFY. Uh, these guys are headhunters in uh, a variety of businesses. The never, this thing never has huge volume. It actually had 1.6 million shares on September 24th on a spike. But for the most part, you know, 500,000 shares is a big deal on this stock. June 26, $36.34, 470,000 shares. As we've gotten up into this last four days, 256,000 shares, 219,000 shares, uh, 192,000 shares, and 195,000 shares. And uh, I don't know what else you can say about it other than that. Energy is about the same on the way up and the same down. But uh, eh, kind of typical of this market, that is, there aren't a lot of incredibly clear signals uh, out here other than the fact that volume is light when we get back to these highs each time. January 23rd on Delta, $51.06, 16 million shares. Got into that high on the 23rd with 11 million shares. Been moving around out here, but what we don't have in the last three days is any kind of huge volume, 5.6 million shares on the 29th. On the 30th, we had 7 million shares. Today, we've got uh, 5.8, so we're probably going to have 7.5 million shares. But we are going against that 16 million share day on January 23rd. It seems like these uh, stocks are coming back up, but uh, certainly not with the kind of gusto. Boy, when, when's the last time you heard the word gusto? The only time I ever heard it, I think it was a Miller beer ads, weren't they? Never, never hear gusto much anymore. Cisco, of course, the uh, big company making uh, a lot of the uh, um, routers for uh, the computer and internet uh, has come up and tested its previous high. That was on August 13th, $29.21, uh, 61 million shares. Got into it uh, back on the 23rd and 26th. Uh, with about 20, man, 26 million shares and 20 million shares. Kind of piped back up last week on the 28th on 23 million shares. It's been drifting lower out here on some lighter volume today, 19 million shares already, but certainly about the same energy on the way up as the way down and about half the volume of that previous August 13th high. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Now, let's take a look at Boeing. Since we talked about them and their Chinese uh, com competition, does it seem to be even phasing them? Yeah, it's kind of light volume out here. Uh, not a lot of juice in Boeing today. It's back into this consolidation range uh, or congestion range, whichever you want to call it, uh, that really started kind of back in, what is this, about mid-May, May 13th, something like that. Pretty much ran all the way into uh, August, uh, late August, August 19th before this fell apart into that August 24th low and everything else. It's been working its way back up here. But uh, just noticing this one, uh, you can make a claim that this thing is going very sideways E without a lot of energy, which is, uh, you know, with the news today on the uh, Chinese competition, uh, not a lot of reassurance out here. Um, they've been talking about building production up to what Aerobus uh, is talking about, but... Uh, I'm going to say we got four dojis in a row out here today and with light volume. So you probably want to be watching uh, the uh, Boeing company in the coming days. Of course, the most dangerous uh, chart in the market has been Salesforce.com. They're going up against their April 29th high that had 28 million shares at 78.46. Getting in today with a big candle, uh, but no big volume, point. Uh, 9 million shares so far. Um, back up even in the last few days, the highest volume in that range was 4.3 million shares. So we continue to see problems with that. But um, is the energy bad on the way up? No. Um, but uh, it doesn't look like it's got a lot of energy. I think their earnings are coming out on the 9th, uh, 19th, excuse me, 18th, excuse me. So they may be able to hang out here a little while longer, but this is probably the strongest uh, stock right now for technology. And interestingly enough, of course, they're out the 18th, and that's the Wednesday before options expiration. So uh, if there's going to be a stock moving uh, the market in uh, expiration this month, it's most likely going to be Salesforce and my most uh, dangerous stock. In the market because if it fails a uh, lot of repercussions in the technology business carnival cruise line we talked about uh, your favorite place to get the norovirus and uh, whether it was uh, one of the other ones we looked at uh, like norwegian or carnival uh july 31st uh, or chipotle uh 54 dollars and five cents 5.5 million shares on that date and we kind of spiked through it on Friday with 3.5 million shares. Pulling back a little bit. Volume has not increased out here. 2.2 million shares for the day. Let's see what the earnings date is on Carnival. And uh, that's December 17th. So you got a little while to go on that one. But uh, that's interesting. Well, we're getting ready for the break. So let's look see how volume's been moving along. Like I said, uh, we're up here at 2,100. We probably should have been seeing something like 4.8, 5.3 billion shares for the day. We've got an hour and some odd left, hour and 10 minutes left, but uh, still haven't cracked 2.5 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. So back up here, volume is light, uh, even on the big indexes, but uh, certainly light on the stocks themselves. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, getting ready, just a few minutes. We've got Tom O'Brien for the next two hours uh, getting ready. I've got a bug in front of me. Ah, got him. Anyway, uh, it's, we're kind of still going through the Indian summer down here in Florida. I was out today and yesterday, and it's kind of like uh, as a kid, you take that magnifying glass and you burn the ants on the pavement. I felt God had his own magnifying glass. Wasn't that hot, but that sun, boy, was blistering through. But uh, very interesting Indian summer out here. I thought the weather would probably get a little bit better. I know my family's all coming down uh, for Thanksgiving, so I have a feeling that the weather will change for the worse exactly then. But uh, maybe it'll hold out till then. Anyway, we're uh, looking at uh, GLD. And you've got a couple of gaps out here. Um, and uh, kind of look kind of interesting, but... Somewhere around in that uh, 107.50 area in the GLD, looks like you could get some support. You got a bunch of gaps in here. The first gap was the gap down on the 30th of September. Then you gap back up on the 2nd of October. And so you've got two gaps there. Hopefully you can see it very well uh, here with the way that the uh, art of timing the trade charts does the gaps. But a pretty nice gap out here. And... Uh, would not be surprised to see that come back in that 107.50 range 
back here in the next day. And of course, a lot of that's going to have to do with uh, the people talking in the Fed. Talk, 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 yak, 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 yada, yada, yada. And uh, I don't know what else you can say about it other than that. A um, few other stocks out here that I wanted to get to before the end of the day. A.O. Smith, of course, the uh, water a company makes water heaters and other things for plumbing in houses and whether or not um, that housing business is going to uh, be what everybody thinks it's going to be. They are back up here at the uh, July 23rd high at 77.43. That day had 1.3. 9 million shares. Last three days, we had 900,000 shares, 700,000 shares today, going over that high and, uh, and going to probably hold it. But right now, about 300,000 shares. Pretty good indication of exactly what's going on in this market. And that is uh, a lot of these stocks, either at highs or lows, uh, look more range bound than anything else. Uh, Apollo Investment Corporation, don't know a lot about them. Uh, a I N V. Uh, and uh, this is a September 30th low uh, that it's broken through in the last couple of days. But again, couldn't get the volume. It's kind of popping back up here. I'm going to check this one out. The only reason I'm really looking at this one is the energy did kind of really come off the October 9th high back here into the lows the last couple of days. But, uh, you know, there are not many stocks giving good signals either at highs and or lows right now but i think we're probably going to get those in the next couple of days really starting to see some of these stocks set up and uh, lots and lots of gartley patterns in the markets and we're going to see how those things play out over the next couple of days but uh, again fun buying pretty much through wednesday fed talk wednesday and thursday so probably going to see some more volatility come back to this market we've got at least some earnings that might move the markets <clears throat> on Tuesdays and, and uh, on Wednesday. So right now, I'm keeping my powder dry. And uh, <clears throat> if we continue to have a light volume as we push these highs once again, I think we've got uh, maybe a good signal coming out here in the next week. But, uh, you know, up 25 points, over 2,100, and the volume falls out just like it has the previous times that we've been up here. Uh, nothing new about that. Hang on for the one and only Tom O'Brien. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.